Hi, let us see what would be the effect on ICF and ECF osmolarity if a fluid of varying osmolarity is added into the body fluids. So this is basically understood by means of darrow yanet diagrams and uh, these diagrams basically represent the osmolarity of ECF and ICF and the volume of ECF ICF in a graph format and uh, then what are the changes in these osmolarity and volume uh, when any fluid is added that is represented uh, further by changes in this graph. So basically darrow yanet diagrams uh, visually explain the effect on ICF and ECF osmolarity and volume with addition loss of fluid, various fluids that is the isotonic, hypertonic or hypertonic fluids. So first let us see basic darrow diagrams in the physiological condition. So here if you see the x axis shows the volume okay, and the y axis shows the osmolarity and basically this axis can extend right so volume can uh, decrease also or i say volume can increase also so in that case we have to shift it to this particular side and the ecf volume can also decrease or increase so this full is determined as a volume and if you see the graph now icf represents two third of total body water so this outer border determines the is representing the total body water then this total body water is divided into uh, two third and one third uh, by means of this central line so this is representing icf and uh, this is part is representing ecf okay and uh, basically you see the volume is different of icf and ecf uh, but osmolarity of icf ecf is same okay more or less icf and ecf osmolarity is same and uh, what happens uh, that if any hypotonic or hypertonic fluid is added then it is the movement of the water which occurs across the membrane between ECF and ICF and ultimately the osmolarity of ICF and ECF will also become same even if uh, addition of some hypotonic or hypertonic fluid is occurring. So let us see what will be the changes of uh, ECF and ICF osmolarity and volume with the addition of various fluids. Now suppose isotonic fluid is added, right? So 0.9% NaCl is an example of isotonic uh, fluid, basically with the tonicity same as that of the plasma. So if that is added, so obviously addition will be in the ECF. You cannot take out all the cells, separate out all the cells and inject any fluid. So uh, first uh, you have to understand that whatever fluid is being added, first changes will be occurring in the ECF. Right. So isotonic NaCl, if it is added, what is the osmolarity? Osmolarity is same as that of the body fluids, right? So here what we will see is the osmolarity, no change, okay, of the ECF, right? But because the fluid is added in the ECF, what will happen that the volume of ECF is going to increase. What about the volume of ICF? Well, there will be no change because the fluid added is isotonic, okay? And movement of water will occur between the compartments if there is a change in the osmolarity, right? So, ICF compartment will remain same, only the ECF compartment will extend, right? So, that is um, the change which will happen in the volume of the ECF and osmolarity of both the compartments will remain same. Now, with the similar logic, what will happen if there is loss of isotonic fluid? If there is loss of isotonic fluid, again, the loss will occur from which compartment? From the ECF compartment, right? So ECF compartment is going to reduce. And since it is isotonic, no fluid movement will occur from ICF to ECF or ECF to ICF, right? So osmolarity is same. Osmolarity is the driving force for water. So since it is same, only there will be reduction in the volume of ECF while ICF compartment will remain same. So if we draw the changes, ICF is the same volume, see no change in volume, right? And the ECF compartment has reduced while the osmolarity in the Y axis, it is same, which was before. Coming to the third, right? So now things are going to become little complicated. Let us see. 
So we'll go step by step so that you understand the concept and you are able to simplify it for yourself also. So now let us add hypotonic fluid. Okay, and uh, where will it be added? Obviously in ECF. So what is going to happen that with the addition of the fluid, with the addition of the fluid, ECF volume is going to increase. We are adding the fluid, isn't it? ECF volume is going to increase. What will happen to osmolarity? Since it is a hypotonic fluid, right? So suppose uh, before osmolarity was 300 and now we add a fluid whose osmolarity is 250. So somewhere in between the osmolarity will come, say suppose 275, right? So osmolarity of ECF is going to decrease with the addition of hypotonic fluid. Now you see that the osmolarity of ECF has become less than that of ICF. So now water movement will occur and uh, from where to where? Water movement occurs from the area of hypotonicity to the area of hypertonicity, right? From the area of less osmolarity to more osmolarity where more solutes are there. So water movement will start occurring into ICF. So what will happen? ICF volume is going to increase, right? And what will happen to osmolarity? Because water movement is occurring, osmolarity of ICF also is going to decrease. The movement of water will go, is going to decrease ICF osmolarity as well. And ultimately, the osmolarity of the two compartments will become same. Understanding so, this osmolarity, it will decrease like this. Okay. And uh, what has happened to volume? Volume has increased. ECF volume has increased because we have added the fluid. Okay. And ICF volume also has increased. Now, one thing, which volume is going to increase more? Is it ICF volume or ECF volume? Well, the water distributes in proportion to the size of the compartment. Then only equilibrium of osmolarity is going to occur. Understanding. So, if suppose 2 liter fluid is added, 2 thirds of this fluid will move into ICF because it is made up of two third of total body water. So ICF compartment is going to increase more compared to the ECF compartment and uh, movement of water basically continues till the osmolarity of both the compartments becomes same. So with the addition of hypotonic fluid, both the compartments volume increases and both the compartments osmolarity decreases. Coming to next, that is the loss of hypotonic fluid. What is going to happen? Now you apply the same logic. What is going to happen? First of all, fluid is getting lost. So from which compartment it is getting lost? From ECF, right? So ECF volume, what will happen? It is going to decrease. What about osmolarity of ECF? Because hypotonic fluid is being lost. That means more of water and less of solutes are being lost. Osmolarity in the compartment is going to increase. Okay, so what we are going to draw is that uh, volume is decreasing like this and osmolarity is increasing. So osmolarity is going to increase, right? Then coming to ICF, what will happen? Obviously, you see that because the osmolarity of ECF has uh, increased, water will move from now ICF to ECF, from low osmolarity to high osmolarity. So yes, what was there in the beginning? That will not be the case. There will be a little bit volume. It will kind of become here, right? And ICF compartment is also going to decrease in volume because water is moving from ICF to ECF, right? What about the osmolarity in ICF? Well, because the water is moving into ECF, only water and not solutes, the osmolarity in ICF also is going to increase, okay? So this is what is going to become the final result. So that is the osmolarity of both the compartments is increasing and the volume of both the compartments is decreasing. So just quickly you see the summary. When we add hypotonic fluid, both the compartments increase in volume and osmolarity decreases. When there is loss of hypotonic fluid, both the compartments decrease in volume and there is increase in osmolarity. Coming to next, that is adding hypertonic solution. So go step by step again. If we add hypertonic solution to ECF, what will happen to volume? We are adding the solution. ECF volume is going to increase, right? 
and since it is a hypertonic solution osmolarity is also going to increase so let us draw it volume will extend like this right and osmolarity also going to increase like this then uh, water movement will occur because of the change in osmolarity osmolarity outside in ecf is more so water will move from icf to ecf so icf volume is going to decrease okay so it will shift this side right only maybe this much icf volume is remaining but osmolarity is going to increase right so osmolarity will be same ultimately in both the compartments so osmolarity is going to increase so this will be the result on adding hypertonic solution fine moving to the last example hopefully you will be able to solve it on your own loss of hypertonic solution so it is moving out from ecf right so ecf volume what will happen ecf volume is going to decrease hypertonic solution is being lost that means more of solutes are being lost less of water so osmolarity is going to decrease then decreased osmolarity will cause movement of the water from ecf to icf right so icf volume is going to increase right and osmolarity again it is going to decrease because uh, the solutes will be diluted by water right so let us draw it here ecf volume decreased like this right osmolarity decreased in both so it will be like this right it has come down and volume increase so icf volume will increase so it will be like this okay so this will be the end result of loss of hypertonic solution thanks for watching the video if you liked it do press the like button share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel physiology open thank you